Hallelujah. All right. Let's let's deal with this. Let me ask you a question. Why in the world would God give you more of what you're not already using? Why would you ask God to give you more of his power, his presence, if you're not using what he's already given you? There's an activating quality to what God gives you. When you learn how to be used of God the way he wants you to be used, the process itself is designed to give you more because he can trust you with what you already have. And there's lots of people who are praying about a lot of things and they're not going through the basics and using what God's already given them. Don't pray for more anointing if you're not using what you already have. That's just the bottom line. I work really diligently to, tr to, to be used of God every single day, even when I'm supposedly at rest. Because there's times that people do need prayer during those times. I get it. Now, I understand that Brent and I do try to balance family time with everything that we do. And you have to learn how to be able to do things and still be able to balance everything out like this and balance other things out like that because Brenda is just as much a ministry to me as anything else. There's lots of people out there that will, uh, will, will reach the world, but they won't reach their family. And there was lots of people when I first got saved, their mentality was the church came before their family. That's jacked up. And from the people that I saw who operated like that, from what I saw, it really didn't work for them. And, and like I said, I learned that that ultimately is not the best posture. It's possible to reach the world for Christ and still have your family intact. That's just the way it is. I've seen too many times where the opposite has been true. So, again, you want to make sure that you understand that the God that, that we serve and the God that we worship, improper understanding can give you a balance. Because I'm going to tell you something about ministry. Ministry can be very addictive. And... Feeling the power and the presence of God can be very much addictive. When you feel the power and the presence of God when you're being used, I mean, that's a good feeling. But sooner, but sooner or later, once the anointing lifts off of you, you still have to be able to properly navigate the other responsibilities that God has given you. Hallelujah. I love my wife. And we talk diligently a lot about having some sense of enjoyment out of doing the work of the Lord. And that's very much possible to do. And we're not advocates of talking crazy to each other and then lifting up our hands in another setting and saying, hallelujah, like we didn't do anything. That does, We don't believe in that. I don't believe in, in her perpetrating like that. And she doesn't believe in that for me. So listen, let's be real. You want to make sure that you you can have some fun. I mean, th this can be something where it can be very enjoyable because because I'm serious about the things of God. But I don't want to alienate my wife in the process of doing those things. Does everybody understand that? And that goes for man or woman. You don't want to be you don't want to be saying a lot of crazy asinine stuff and then going forth in ministry like you ain't did anything. Now, you cannot control people attacking you and discrediting you, but just make sure you're not guilty of the same thing. Hallelujah. So, again, and, and Brenda's not the type of person that can fake it. If things ain't going right between us, if we was out in public, she's not going to act like they are. She's not going to act like they are. If they're not going right, she's not going to act like they are. So, 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 so again, that's easy. <laughs> we fixed that. He fixed that. So, so again, Learn how to hear the voice of God. Now, this is the other thing. Lots of counseling is done primarily because people do not obey the word of God and they do not listen to the spirit of God. A lot of things can be avoided if people practice the word of God 
in its proper interpretation and listen to the Spirit of God. There's certain, certain things they would not do and would not say if they was able to do that. It wouldn't be necessary to counsel every situation. And this is one of the things that we have to fix because a lot of people do not study the Word of God and get the proper interpretation. They get an interpretation from somebody who's got a jacked up interpretation. And people do not even hear this, the voice of God telling them, don't do that, don't say that. I mean, listen, God is ready to speak to his people. But 80 to 90 percent of the people that, that listen to me or, or out there in the church world itself do not understand the voice of God. And that's something that has to be addressed and fixed. Now, we understand that some people, they want their dose of church, and that's all they want. They don't want any real relationship with God. We get that. But, I'm, but for those of you that are hungry for a little bit more, we want to encourage you to be able to know the voice of God and to be able to properly interpret, interpret these scriptures for yourself. So, again, don't ask for any more of what you already have and you're not using. Because you'll find that as you seek the face of God and as you do what God is telling you to do, he's going to give you more because you've proven yourself faithful with what he's already given you. That that That's going to be a foregone conclusion. God is going to give you more of what you're using. He's going to replenish you. The more revelation that you use to be a blessing and to glorify him, he's going to give you an opportunity for more revelation. Just stay open for that. All right, so let's tie this together. Acts chapter 4. Now, we're not going to use Acts chapter 3. It's going to be tied together. Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse number 1, and it reads as such. And it says, and as, as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees, this, this, is, this is Peter, and I believe it is John. Yes, Peter and John, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Peter and John. Being, listen, let's, let's start again. And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even time. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. That was popular. Now let's build up on this. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were on their way to the temple and they prayed for the man who was who was at the gate and he ra and God raised him up and created controversy. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Hallelujah. So what gave them an open door to speak unto the people all through Acts chapter 3 and going into Acts chapter 4 where the religious people of the day wanted to put their hands on him. What opened the door for all of this in the first place was what they did at the beginning, and they operated in the miracle work and power of God. Peter and John did not preach a sermon. They just said a few words, because a lot of people think that you got to preach the word, and then signs one just follow those that believe. I heard somebody say that. <laughs> really? Okay. But, but listen. The bottom line was is that they didn't preach a sermon. They just operated in authority. Now, they was on the way to the house of God for prayer, which is something that is missing in today's church. I remember years ago when, when I truly came into deliverance and the supernatural, and, and, and an introduction to supernatural, I understood that it took time before the altar and prayer, I mean, continuous prayer. And that doesn't mean you don't do anything else, but we spent time in prayer. And before service, we would be up there at the front, at the altar, praying and seeking the face of God and getting ourselves together. Then we go to our seats and then we're ready. Oh, we're ready for I me mean, for whatever's going to happen. But that was also setting the atmosphere for a free flow of what was going to happen in the service when the man of God got up to speak or anybody else, whether it was the MC or whatever the case is. It all set it all set everything in motion because nowadays when before people have service, everybody want to congregate, everybody want to laugh and joke and kid. Hey, how how's the wife and kids and all of that stuff like that? All of that can happen after. But when we're coming to a place where we want to reverence God, 
some of that stuff needs to be left outside of the four walls. And then when you come in, be ready to worship because you want God to do something for you. Do not disrespect the spirit of God and expect him to be everything he needs to be in your life. All right. So that's what that, that's what we did. So, again, that Peter and John, they went to the house of the Lord for prayer, setting the foundation for, for what would eventually happen. You know, so a lot of people in this day, you got to understand something. The devil is not afraid of your Bible knowledge. He's afraid of the Bible knowledge you have with revelation. Because a lot of people can quote the, quote this, quote this Bible from cover to cover, but, they, but until you have the ability to live it, it doesn't mean anything. Because don't be puffed up with your knowledge. The true essence of the fact that you know something is by what you do with it. Oh my God, I feel the presence of God with this. He cried by my son, by my son, by Sunday. You can quote this word, but it, your words need to be seasoned with Holy Ghost authority. Does everybody understand it? The devil is afraid of those that understand their authority in the kingdom of God. Now, this may not necessarily be a 15 minute segment. All right, for those of you that are looking for something short and sweet today, it, we'll see how that goes. But we see an open door behind, behind, behind a divine encounter in Acts chapter 3, where a man is raised up, and that was the catalyst for them to be able to preach. In other words, an open door for them to preach to the people that were surrounded in Solomon's porch. But as they're preaching, they come across some of the Sadducees who was offended and grieved that they was talking in the name of Jesus, the one that they, they, that they was instrumental in having him crucified. So, help, I want to help you understand something. The gospel within itself, <clears throat> either in word, Sunday. let's tie this together nice. The gospel within itself, hallelujah. In word and in action, there will be times that it will create controversy. There will be times it will create a stirring. It will make religious people uncomfortable. And you need to understand that this is important. If you're going to be afraid of making waves, then you're not you're not truly a candidate for the gospel. Because the gospel, the gospel is going to embrace people, it's going to lift people up, but it's going to make people uncomfortable. And this is the other thing. When you live the life of the gospel, you're going to make religious people and people who have no revelation uncomfortable. Now, in order for you to navigate through the time that we're in right now, God is looking for people that are going to walk in a true reflection of the word of God. Not their own interpretation, but a true reflection. Now, there's a saying that goes that's going around right now concerning the stuff that's going on in the world how we need to obey the laws of the land, and that is true. Unless it conflicts with the word of God. We answer to a higher government. We answer to a higher calling. Anything that contradicts the word of God and brings a reproach upon the word of God, we do not have to listen to that. I'm going to tell you, because we have a king, his name is Jesus. So, do not use that phrase as a crutch to be weak in the things of the spirit. Hear me clearly. Do not use statements like that as a crutch to be weak in the spirit. I just got a I just got a I mean an email early today and we and we got a, and we're gonna be praying for them and we're gonna believe God to, to do his miraculous work. They was doing the best they can to avoid I mean, contacting COVID-19, but yet they still they still got COVID-19 staying in the house. Listen, we're in a very precarious time right now. So the mandates that people are placing don't always, matter of fact, matter of fact what we're seeing is that, that it's not stopping much of anything. And if people can put you in bondage through me at this stage, then they're setting you up 
for stuff that they want to do to control and manipulate you later. You better know what God is telling you in the midst of all of this. Do not be afraid to be different from everybody else. This is the key. If you know that what God has told you, operate within that. Now, we understand that, you know, if somebody's at work and they require you to do a certain protocol, you you render unto them what they what they want you to do. But for you to be walking around in bondage all through the course of the rest of your day and your life, that is not of God. I'm going to be honest with you, that's not of God. I've taken flack and criticism from for my stance on how we're supposed to operate within this time frame that we live in. I've had people question me concerning it, and they have a right to do that, like I said, but I have an answer for that. But at the end of the day, hear me clearly, you have to be persuaded in your own belief. I mean, you have to be persuaded in that. And But if you want to be where you, or you are, go ahead, like I said, let's be friends. I want to do what I believe God would have me to do. And, and the thing about it is, at some point, you have to trust the Lord in this whole process. And, oh my God, we want to see something very powerful happen. But it's gonna. But we're gonna have to have some courage. We're gonna have some. We're gonna have to have some backbone. But we're gonna have to have revelation. We're not talking about just going based upon some blind concept. We want to make sure that when we go forward, that we're walking in the true revelation of what God is telling us. And for that, we want to stay close to the Lord. But get back to what I said. When you preach the word of God. The way, the way God would have you to preach it. It's not going to always make people happy. Many times it's going to make people very uncomfortable. The gospel is supposed to bring controversy. It's supposed to stir the pot. It's supposed to shake the foundation of everything that's not of God. God is looking for some people right now that will speak with no fear of repercussions with no fear of reprisals, no fear, no fear of any consequences, because God has got your back, beloved. God, I'm telling you today, God's got your back. Hallelujah. This is the greatest opportunity for God to show himself strong. Hallelujah. While everybody else is cowering in fear, we want those that are listening right now to be aggressive, and to know that God of heaven and earth will stand with you. I'm trying to be calm here right now. Oh my God, I'm trying to be calm here. Oh my Jesus. Hallelujah. Change the narrative of fear where you live. Break the prevailing thought pattern of what is going on where you, where you are. Because people are silent, silently following a narrative and they're going into step and some of them don't even know what they're following. How could I but they don't. Hallelujah. A lot of this stuff that's going on right now is based upon some deception and some lies. Hallelujah. How could I about something about Sunday? Where is the remnant? Where is the remnant of people that are hearing the call from heaven? to go take territory, to manifest the kingdom of God everywhere they go. We see in this situation that this miracle set up a very powerful encounter with lots of people that was there at the temple. And even though the scribes and Pharisees took Peter and John away, the scripture says that 5,000 people believed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the number of the men was about 5,000. So, and so, and technically, it could have been more than just 5,000. All right. So this is what God wants to do. God wants to stir the pot through us. Do not be afraid of controversy. Just be ready to be everything that God would have you to be. We declare God's blessing over your life for this segment. We release this segment over your life in Jesus' name. Make a difference in a place of darkness. God spoke to me a couple days ago and said that we're lights in a dark place. I believe that. I receive that. That's for you today. We love you. Stir up some trouble for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Have some fun in the Holy Ghost. We'll be talking to you again real soon. We love you. Be blessed. Have a blessed time.